Hello all, this is Anis with you. Welcome to my channel. In this video tutorial, you will learn how to make a master detail CRUD application in ASP.NET Core using MVC pattern with NTT Framework Core, Advanced JavaScript, jQuery and CSS. The main objective of this application is to save the master and detail records together in a easiest and best way. This application has one master and two detail grids. This is the first time in YouTube a tutorial has come to save two detail grids at the same time. And the important point here is both the detail grids are equipped with the jQuery client side validations. Normally adding validations to the detail grids are not easy. And I have solved those challenges here in a very brilliant way. If you watch this full video, I can guarantee that in the future making any type of master detail screens like sales invoice, purchase order, indent entry form etc will not be a problem at all. Ok, let's dive to the demo of the application. In here, user can delete or add rows in the experience and software grids as per the requirement. Then let me show you the delete screen of the application. Here all information is read only so that the user can review before deleting. Now let's create an applicant. First fill the header information like name, gender, age and qualification. After that select a photo. After that come to the detail record section. First fill the experience information and then add one more experience detail row. Likewise, I have added two more experience detail rows. Notice once I add three rows, the vertical scroll bars appear to accommodate more rows. And I have made the total experience column to read only and added a JavaScript to calculate the experience total and displaying in the total experience column. Then let's go to the softwares rating grid. Here user can select any number of softwares and can add it to his profile with the rating. I am adding many softwares to the grid to show you it can support any number of rows. Ok all set. Let's save the record. Wow it saved successfully. Let's view the applicant which we just saved. This is the detail screen of the applicant. See here also we are getting the scroll bars when the applicant has more number of rows. Then let's open the same applicant in the edit mode. This is the edit screen of the applicant. Looks very nice isn't it? Actually I love this project. This is the very important feature of this project. Now I am going to delete details from the middle and first rows of the grids. If you are following this project from the part 1, you may be very eager to see this. Let's save and open the same record again in the edit mode. Wow, the changes we made got saved successfully. I mean, now we fix the 0th index issue of the MVC model binder. Let's open the same record in the view mode also. See, the record is proper. So, finally, we won the battle, not with single grid, but with double grid. What else you want? Enjoy guys. Let's jump into the development. In part 2 of this series, many of you have requested to change the gender text box to select as control, so that user can select the gender and the chances for spelling mistakes are avoided. To do this, first open the resumecontroller.cs and scroll down to the bottom of the file. Then after add a method named getGender. This method will return a list of select list items. Oh there is an error indicator below the method name. So click show potential fixes and select the first suggested fix to resolve this issue. 
and then declare a variable named cell gender. This variable holds a list of select list item type. Then set this variable to new list of select list item. After that add one more variable named cell item. and assign it to a new of select list item. Then set the value of the new select list item to null and set the text of the new select list item to select gender. Then after add this cell item to the first position of the cell gender select list item. We do this by using the insert method of the generic list. After that we need to add the male value to the gender select item. So set the cell item variable to new of select list item and pass the word male to the value parameter of the constructor. And then pass the value male to the text parameter also. Then after add this cell item to the cell gender select list. Now we need to add the female value to the gender select list item. So this time set the cell item variable to a new of select list item and pass the word female to the value and text parameter of the cell item constructor method. Then add this cell item to the cell gender select list. Then return the cell gender and complete the method. This is a very simple method and hope you all understood. And then we want this select list item to be available for the view files like create and edit.cshtml. So in the create action method we will call the get gender method and attach the resulted select list item to the view back. By setting viewback.gender equals to get gender, it will be available for the create.cshtml. After that, expand the views folder and select the resume folder and then expand the resume folder and open the create.cshtml from the resume folder. In create.cshtml, first scroll up to the top and locate the gender text box markup code. Then change the type of gender text box control to select list and then set asp-items of select list to viewback.gender. Then after close the select tag. Now all set to go. Let's build and run the application to see the output. After that click the resumes menu link followed by the create new button. Wow now we got the select list control for gender. Let's click the create button to produce the validation errors. Notice all the client side jQuery validations are working. But what happened to the gender select item control? The validation is not showing any error message. What really went wrong here? Why it is not working? Let's see and fix it. Ok got the error. Actually for strings we cannot set null value. So by default the zero length string is set to the gender property. Because of this the validation failed. So let's change the default value of the gender select list to zero length empty string instead of null. Let's build and run the application and click the create new button again. Now click the create button to load the validation errors. Note this time the validation error is appearing for the gender select list control also. In the applicant creation screen the add button is kept after the delete button. But I got better idea. So I moved the add button to the header row of the grid. See the second image which looks better. To do that 
first scroll to the detail grid section and locate the header row of the experience detail grid. Then delete the dummy button which we used in the earlier part to fix the alignment issues. But this time I have better ideas. Brian finds better way as time passes you know. Then cut the add button from the detail row and paste it to the header row. After that rename the add button name to btn add experience because now we are going to have only one add button. Earlier we used to have multiple add buttons like delete but now the logic got changed. After that remove the inline style attributes from the add button. We don't need this anymore. And also remove the inline style attributes from the remove button also. We don't need this anymore here also. Let's check everything in action. Yes the add button is working fine and looks fantastic. This is not enough. Wait and watch. We are creating a grid here. And then there is one drawback in the present add method. When we delete the row the delete button is allowing to delete all the rows of the grid. Because of this issue when we try to add a row when there is no row available to clone it clones the header row and create the duplicate header row. This is not the best user experience. So to overcome this issue we need to restrict the user from deleting the first row. Let's go back to the create.cshtml and locate the delete item javascript method. In this method add variable named table and set table to document.getElementById of exp table. Then declare an other variable named rows. Set this variable rows to table.getElements by tag name of tr. Basically we are getting the rows count of the experience table here. After that add if condition to check is the rows dot length equals to 2. If the rows dot length equals to 2 then call an alert to show the message that this row cannot be deleted. Here why are we checking for rows count length to 2? Because header row is also counted as a row and we want to restrict the user from deleting the first row. So totally 2 rows. Then build and run the application to check the output on the screen. First we will add few rows to the table. Then after we will delete all the rows of the table. But notice we are not able to delete the first row when the table is having only single row. Then let's add many rows. See when I add more number of rows the table grows and the page height increases abnormally. And this is also not a good user experience. So to fix this issue go to the parent div of the experience detail table. I mean the div in which the experience table is kept. To this div add the inline style attributes and set the height to 200 px and overflow dash y equals to auto. Let's build and run the application. Now add many rows again like before. But this time the table started scrolling and our screen height is not disturbed. I like this approach somewhat. But the drawback of this approach is the header row is also scrolling and gets hidden when we add many rows to the table. Since I love perfection 
and always wants to be a perfectionist. Shall we try to fix the header row and will make only the data rows to scroll? If we make that successfully, then it will become a proper grid. Are you guys eager to see that? To achieve that, let's add a style class. So scroll up to the top of the page and add a style tag. Inside the style tag, add a CSS class named code as table. Yes, you are right. My channel name is code as. So I simply kept the table name as code as table. After that, set the table width to 100%. Then after set the width of the t head row of the codes table to calc of 100% minus 1 em. Here we are leaving this 1 em because head row of the table will not have the scroll bar. After that add style attributes to the table body section. First, make display to block. Then after, set the height attribute to 140px. Then make overflow dash y equals to auto, I mean the vertical scroll bar, and overflow dash x to hidden, I mean the horizontal scroll bar. Then after, we add the common style attributes to the t head T body and TR sections of the table. First, make the display to table, then make width to 97% and set the table layout to fixed. Now set the border to none for the T head, T body and T D parts of the table. Also notice that I made the border to none and not important so that the borders will not appear in any section of our table. Then after go to the experience detail table and add the code as table class to the CSS class section. Then build and run the application. Now let's add many rows. Notice the table header is fixed and only the data rows of the table are scrolling. I think I deserve a subscription here. Guys could you please subscribe to my channel. Okay now let's try to delete all the rows. Yes delete method is also working fine. So far so good. But still I am not convinced with this grid because there are lot of space after the add and delete button. Would not be nice if the add button and delete is pushed to the right extreme. Everything is possible in the world of programming. So let's do that also. So go to the experience table mockup and in the head section Set the width for the last column to 75px. This is the column which holds the add button. Then after in the table row section set the width for the last column as 60px because we want 15px for scroll bars. Now build and run the application. Notice now the add button and delete buttons are pushed to the right extreme 
and looks great. Then let's add some rows to check the scroll bars. Wow, it really looks like a third party jQuery component. Then the next issue is we have a field in the header section of the screen named total experience in years. In here, if we enter 5 years and add 8 years in the detail section, it will accept and will lead to erroneous data. To overcome this issue, one best way is to make the total years column of the header section to read only field and we should calculate the total years from the experience table and display it here. Sounds like a plan, but is it easy to do it? No worries, it is very very easy. Please follow me. First locate the total experience markups of the div and delete the validation span markups. There is no use of keeping validation spans for read only fields. After that add the read only flag to the total experience text box control. And then change the CSS class to form-control-plaintText. This will make the control to look like a label control. Now let's run and check the output screen. Notice the total experience in ES text box becomes read only, but only half the job is done. We need to write a JavaScript to calculate the total. Let's do that. This is very important, so please listen carefully. First, we need to identify the ES worked control to do the sum of the values present in this control. One of the best way to identify the controls to create a fake CSS class and set this class to the controls which all we want in the loop. So let's create a class named ES worked and set the background dash image to none. This is what I told you. Anyway, background dash image is going to be none for all the controls by default but still we set it just to identify the controls by class name and then scroll down and locate the ES worked control. Now add the class ES worked to the CSS class list of the ES worked control. Then go to the script section of the create.cshtml and here add a function named calc total experiences. This function is going to do a magic for us. So let's wait and watch. After that inside the function declare a variable named x. After that set x equals to document.getElements by class name of years worked. Basically, this code will get all the controls with CSS class years worked in it. Then after add two more variables named total exp and i, i for iteration variable and set total exp to 0. And then add a for loop with i equals to 0 and i less than x dot length and then i plus plus. For every loop increment set the total exp to total exp plus the value found in the years worked text box. Here the x of i will contain the years worked text box of that particular row. After that find the total experience control from the header section using the document.getElement by id of total experience and set the value of total exp to it. Then add the return statement to complete the function. Now we are done with the calculation part, but when we should call this method? This is a very tricky question and very important. So listen carefully. I am going to call the document.eventListener method in the create.cshtml. 
This document dot event listener can be used to monitor all controls of the document. And the event type which I am interested to monitor is change. So I am going to monitor change event of all controls of the document. Then there is one drawback. This event listener is going to listen for all the controls of the document. Our, con our document may have 100 to 1000 controls. So if you are going to listen for all the controls, then it is a overburden and we are the document may become slow. So let's add a if condition to filter the events only for the controls which has yes worked in the CSS class list. This we achieve by adding a if condition with e.target.classList.contains of yes worked. Then after inside this if condition we call the method calculate total experiences which is the method calculating the actual total experiences from the grid. After that complete the function and run the application to check the output screen. In here let's add few experience rows and enter the numbers in the yes worked column of the experience detail grid. Notice total experience in yes text box is automatically changed to the sum of the yes worked column of the experience detail grid. So our JavaScript is working fine and doing the magic. Next challenge is when we delete a row the experience total is not refreshing. This leads to errors. So let's fix this issue also because I love challenges. Actually this issue is very simple to fix. Copy the calculate total experiences method call and paste it to the delete item method. Then build and run the application. Now add few rows and enter some numbers in the years worked column and notice that the total experience text box is showing the sum of experience. Then after delete the middle row notice the total experience text box got changed to 2. Again delete the first row and notice the total experience text box got changed to 0. Ok so far so good. Next we are going to the important task. In this part I have improved the add item method very much. If you have watched previous parts you might have surprised with these improvements. Delete the selected code from the add item method. Basically this code hides and unhides the add and delete buttons respectively. But now the approach is changed. We have only one add button and we don't need to hide anything here. After this another important change is finding the last index. In the previous parts we used to save the last index in a hidden control and will increment and decrement the value of this control but now got different idea. So comment this line. After that set last index equals to rows dot length minus 1 and then delete the line which sets next row index to the last index hidden control. We do not follow this pattern now. Ok all set to go. Let's build and run the application and enter an applicant details to check the program. Let's enter name as Anis Mohammed and age as 42 years and then enter qualification as MCA. Then select the image. Notice total experience field is read only. Let's enter the experience history. First company we will enter as HCL and designation as trainee and years as 3. Notice the total experiences field is calculated automatically. Next add one more experience row. Notice again the total experience field is refreshed. 
Likewise, we will add one more row. So far, three rows are added and notice the scroll bars which appeared automatically. Let's add one more row. So totally four rows and four companies. That's a nice resume for a 23 years experienced guy. Let's click the create button and wait for the result. Wow, it got saved successfully. Let's select and see whether all data is saved properly. Click the details button to view the applicant. Perfect, everything is saved properly. So the program is working fine. Then when we click the edit button, we get an error saying local loss page cannot be found because we have not yet created the edit module. So let's do it. Hello all, making YouTube video takes lot of time and efforts. But all these efforts should have a meaning. So please like, comment and share this video. Thanks a lot. Let's continue to the tutorial. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get notified. Before creating the edit module, we should move the codes table CSS class to the site.css because we are going to use this class in the edit screen also. So select the style section from the create.cshtml and cut it. Then after open the solution explorer and then open the site.css file from the CSS folder which is inside the www root folder. And then paste the style markups from the clipboard to the site.css. After that, remove the style tag and style closing tag from site.css. Then build and run the application to check the output. Let's add few rows. Some issues, the scroll bars are not appearing. Let's check and fix it. Actually, the issue is not with our code, but with the browser. Normally, all browsers will not load the new version of CSS files when already a CSS file in the same name exists in the browser cache. So, we need to make the browser to load the latest version of the CSS files for every request. To do this, let's open the layout.cshtml partial view and search for the line which is linking the site.css file. In here, add the tag helper asp-append-version equals to true. By passing the value true, the browser will make sure it reloads the new file every time and discards the cache file. Now let's build and run the application to check the output. Let's add few rows. Wow, this time we got the expected output. That means everything is working fine. So far, so good. Next, we need to move all the JavaScript functions of the create.cshtml to site.js because we will be using the functions in the edit.cshtml also. So, select all the JavaScript functions and cut it from the create.cshtml. After that, paste the JavaScript code from the clipboard to the site.js. Then after, remove the script tags from the site.js. Since it is already a JS file, adding script tags does not make any sense. Then after, open the layouts.cshtml file again and make sure you have added the set tag helper asp-append-version to true. After that, build and run the application. Let's create a new applicant. Enter Anil Minan in the name. He was my faculty 25 years back. He teaches so nicely. Then let's enter gender and age details in the respective text boxes. After that, enter the qualification. Then select some fake photo because I don't have his photo or his contact. After that, let's enter experience details. Maybe we will enter 3 or 4 rows. 
After that, let's click the create button. If all went through properly, then we should have three details rows in this record. Let's scroll and find this record. Then after, let's click the details button of this record. Wow, the record is saved properly. We can see all its experience details here. So everything is working fine even after moving the CSS classes and JavaScript code to the site.css and site.js respectively. Now we are ready to create the edit module. First copy the create.cshtml and paste it in the same folder. Then rename the pasted file to edit.cshtml. After that open the edit.cshtml. In the edit.cshtml, rename the heading to edit applicant. After that, change the asp-action to edit in the form post target action. Then this is an important step. Add a hidden control and set asp- for to id. Basically, this control will hold the applicant ID which we want to edit. Then after, add one more hidden control and set ASP-for to photo URL. This control will hold the image path of the applicant's image. and then scroll and search for the code of the preview photo image. Then set the source of the preview photo to model.photo url. After that change the caption text of the submit button to save. and then open the resumeController.cs and locate and select the details action method. After that, copy the details action method and paste to the bottom of the resumeController.cs. After that, rename the pasted method name to edit. Actually, the HTTP get edit action method and details action method codes are same. Then decorate the edit method head with HTTP get because like create action method the edit action method will also have two methods one with HTTP get verb and the other one with the HTTP post. Then after copy the HTTP post create action method and paste below the HTTP get edit action method. After that, rename the pasted method to edit. After that, change the context.add to context.attach because this time we are not adding the applicant. We are editing the existing record from the database. So, we should use context.attach. Then we should add a if condition to check is the user has uploaded the new image because user will not change the image frequently. First we check the profile photo field. If it is not equals to null then user has uploaded a new image. So we will save that image to the images folder and set the photo URL to the image file name. Ok we are done. Let's build and run the application. Let's select the second record for editing. Oh, we have forgotten to fill the gender select list. So open the resumeController.cs and locate the edit method with HTTP get verb and add viewback.gender equals to get gender. Let's run the application again. 
ok this time the gender select list is loaded properly and the select list is set to the value from the database. Now change the years worked and try to save the record. Oh it is asking us to upload the photo, but photo is already uploaded during the create action. So why should we upload again? This is an error. Let us comment the required attribute from the profile photo property of the applicant model dot cs. Now again try to edit the same record. This time the record is edited successfully. Let us load the same record. Notice it has created the duplicate records in the detail table. Actually we entered only two rows, but it has saved four rows. Even when we delete the duplicate rows and try to save again, it is creating duplicate rows only. So there is an issue in the edit action method. So to fix this issue, let us open the resume controller.cs and locate the edit action method. Listen carefully, this is little important step. Uh, even there are lot of comments about this in the comment section. People are asking about how to handle this. Actually it is very easy. In here we will add codes to remove the existing records of this applicant from the database first. To do that first let us fetch the applicant experiences from the database and populate it to a list variable. Actually, if you are not using EF core and if you are interested in creating your own data access layer with SQL command and SQL connection, then probably you have used this approach only. But we are slightly confused because of the EF core ORM. Why not use the same pattern here? That's what I'm doing. First, we are fetching the existing experiences of the applicant and storing that in a list variable. After that we will delete the existing records from the database to avoid the creation of duplicate records. Now remove these records from the database using the context.experiences.remove range by passing the list variable. This action will delete all the experience record of this applicant from the database. Then after call the context.savechanges method. After that go to the line which attaches the applicant entity to the context. Below that add a line context.entry of applicant.state equals to entity state dot modified. Here we are informing the EF core that the received applicant info from the form post is modified and it has to start tracking because we already called the save changes method in the previous step. So all tracking information might have been committed. Then this is a very very important line. You might not seen this before. At least I have not shown this in any of my tutorials so far. First time. I am releasing a secret code of link. In here we are adding the experiences details which are submitted by the user through the model. We already deleted the existing experiences from the applicant of the database. So probably this time it should not create duplicate entries. Let us build and check the output. Let us open the same record and delete all the experience detail rows and leave the first row. Then click the save button. Wow! Notice this time it has saved properly. I mean no duplicates. Then open the same record again for addition. This time I am going to show an other important trick. So watch it carefully. Let us click the add button to add one more experience row. Notice here 
the added row already contains the text of the previous row because we are actually cloning the first row to create additional rows. But this was not a problem in the create.cshtml. Why? Because there the first row used to be empty at the time of document.load. So no issues there. But here the first row will have the data at the time of document.load. So there is an issue here. No worries, we will fix it. To fix this issue, open the site.js and locate the add item method. Here we are going to add the code which will fix the issue. First declare a variable named x and set this x to document.getElement by tax name of input. Basically we are getting the reference to all the input controls of the document. Guys, if you wanted to use lot of dynamic controls in your application, whether it is a Angular application or C Sharp or Java or whatever, this tutorial will be very useful because in this I have extensively used JavaScript. In fact, you can say this as a JavaScript tutorial instead of ASP.NET Core. Then after add a for loop iteration for cnt equals to 0 and cnt less than x dot length and cnt plus plus. After that we are going to add an important if condition to check is the control in the for loop iteration is a text control. And then also check the id of the for loop iteration control. If the id has new row index in it then this is the control we are looking for. Now we found the control. So set the value of the for loop iteration control to empty text. There is a small spelling mistake in the row index. So fix it. Ok we are done with the add item method. Let's build and run the application. Now open the same record in which we are working with. Let's click the add button. Wow, this time empty row is added. That's great. But the yes work column is still having the value of previous row. To fix this issue, open the site.js again and in the add item method, copy the if condition inside the for loop iteration and paste it below. Then after, add a else condition before the pasted code. And after that, change the word text to number in the pasted code. Let's build and run the application again. Then select and open the same record for edition and click the add button. This time all the controls of the new row is empty, even the yes work column. So our code is working fine. Ok, let's enter the details for the second row and click the save button. Now the record is saved successfully. So at least this time the edit should have worked properly. Very eager to see, right? I am also very eager to see the output of my code. Ok, let's open the same record for edition. Yes, this time the record is saved properly. So we are almost done with the edit module. Let's add one more row and save it. Now open the same record again. As my guess, the third row should have been saved properly. Yes, it is saved properly. Now the imported codes and logics to follow, so don't go away. 
Let's open the same record again and delete the first row. I mean we are going to delete the controls with the zero index and save it. After that open the same record to check the impact. Notice all the rows are deleted but we had deleted only the first row. Why the other rows are deleted? This is the question again and again coming in the comment section. Actually this is the issue of the ASP.NET Core MVC model binder. Model binder cannot bind controls collections if the index is not in a zero based sequential number. In here the zeroth index is missing as we had deleted the first row so model binder fails. Let's select an other record to check an other case. In here we are going to delete the middle row. Let's see the impact of deleting a middle row also. Click the save button to update the changes back to the database and open the same record again. Notice here the first row got saved. I mean the row before the middle row got saved but the row after the middle row is deleted and even the middle row is also deleted. Again this is the same issue because index 1 is missing so model meter was not able to bind the third row. So what is the solution for this? That is the 1 million dollar question. Before going to the solution let's check the final case also. This time we are going to add few more records to the existing applicant and see is it getting saved. Click the save button and reopen the same record to see the impact. Yes it got saved. There is no issue in adding any number of records. Only the problem occurs during the deletion of rows. And we know deleting last row does not affect our logics. The remaining rows will get saved properly. Notice as I said it is saved properly. Ok now we are going to see the important logic that is how to handle the deletion of middle or first row. I know all of you are very eager to see this even I am. Today I am going to reveal this secret to the world. Actually speaking there is no direct solution available for this. If it is easily available definitely many of the YouTubers might have made the videos on it. You can ask me then how I am going to solve this issue. Very simple. Part of solution is available in ASP.NET Core MVC and the remaining is available in the JavaScript our old friend. So we are going to attach both to form a complete solution. First open the experience model. Add a boolean property named is deleted and set the default value for this property to false. So it means the row is not deleted. Next add the not mapped attribute to the head of the is deleted property. We have seen the use of is mapped attribute in the part 1 of the series. So I recommend you to watch the part 1 to get the full understanding of not mapped property. So please see the part 1 to understand its purpose. The video link is available in the description. After that open the site.js from the js folder which is inside the www root folder. Then in the delete item method declare a variable named btn idx and set btn idx equals to btn dot id replace all of btn remove to empty string. Guys I believe if you are watching up to this length of the video I guess definitely you are my subscriber. Thanks for subscribing. Actually I have lot to tell. So stay on this channel to learn more. Thank you again. Basically this line gets the index of the button by replacing everything else to the empty string. After that declare a variable named 
id of is deleted this variable is a very very important one this line is very tricky we already got the index of the remove button in the previous line since this is deleted control is also going to be in the same row the index for this is deleted control should be same as the remove button index so we can make the part of the id of the is deleted control by combining the index with the word is deleted as shown in the video then declare a variable named hid is del id this variable is to retrieve and store the id of the hidden control named is deleted guys these three lines are the very important lines of the project so try to understand completely of course i know it looks complicated but we are programmers we love challenges we are going to create ai and robots for the future so watch again and again till you understand this part clearly in here we get the id of the hidden is deleted control by using the document dot query selector and passing id dollar equals to id of is deleted dot id this line actually searches the id by passing the part of the id from the end so it looks for the match in the all controls ids and gives the first match and then we are setting the value of the is deleted control of that row to true this we do by passing the id of the control to the document dot get element by id of hit is del id dot value equals to true then this is also very very important line because we do a small trick here i told you right there is no direct solution but we can create a tricky solution here instead of deleting the row we are hiding the row but the user thinks the row is deleted actually we did not delete the row the row is hidden by doing this we made the row available for the model binder so that no index will be skipped and the indexes will be in a sequential array of numbers so now model binder can work correctly and one more thing i want to tell you we made the is deleted flag to true this is going to play an important role so watch and follow carefully then after open the edit.cshtml and change the title to edit as the title is still showing as create and then scroll down to the experience detail section in here add a hidden input control and then add asp dash for tag helper and then set asp dash for equals to model dot experience of i dot is deleted this is the important line so please do it as shown now we are done with the edit dot cs html so open the resume controller dot cs and locate the http post edit action method in here add the magic line which is going to do the magic for us guys don't think this is going complicative this is the easiest way to do the master detail with a professional user interface of course you need to watch it slowly to understand every part of it but watch it because it is worth watching then call the applicant dot experiences dot remove all method to remove all the rows which has the is deleted flag to true 
using the lambda expression as shown. That's it. We are done. Build and run the application. Click the resumes menu link to load the applicant's listing screen. Then load the applicant and let's delete the first row. Oh, error. I think some basic JavaScript error. Delete is not working. No issue. We will check and fix this issue. Ah, I told you, no, a small mistake. Actually, the parameter should be in the square bracket for the document.query selector. Okay, let's change and run the application again. Now select the same record again and let's delete the first row. Wow, first row is now deleted. The JavaScript error is also resolved. Then click the save button. Actually we have deleted the first row and trying to save the record only with the second row. So please remember. As per our old logics, it should not work, right? But see the surprise. Let's open the same record again. See, now it has got saved properly. So we fix the issue of the ASP.core model binder. Hey, very good work. And one more important thing I want to ask. How many of you are not subscribed yet? If so, no worries, please subscribe. I think I deserve a subscription here. Guys, even the paid tutorials do not teach up to this depth. I am doing it for free. So please subscribe and share. And then let's open another record. In here delete the second row and third row and click the save button. Notice the total experience in years was not changing. Why why why? Because we are not deleting the row. We are only hiding the row. So the experience control exists and JavaScript calculation is correct. Ok, let's click the save button to update the changes back to the database. Open the same record again. Everything is saved successfully. Only the issue is now the total experience calculation. Actually that's not a big issue. We can easily fix it. But when we add a row, the total experience in years are getting calculated properly. So no issue with the addition. Only the issue is at the time of deleting the row. Guys, you can become fluent in both ASP.core and JavaScript if you follow my channel. What else you want? If you become an expert in ASP.core with MVC and JavaScript, you can learn any programming language easily. Then we need to add the changes to the create action method also because create action still has the issue. So copy the line which has the applicant.experiences.remove all of n lambda n dot is deleted equals to true from the edit action method and paste it in the create action method. Then open the edit.cshtml and copy the is deleted control from the experience detail table. After that paste the is deleted control code from the clipboard to the create.cshtml. Now let's create a new applicant. Let's enter name as Abdul Jabbar. He is my colleague. Actually, he is a SQL expert. He writes complicated queries in a simplest way. Then enter age as 35 and enter the qualification. Enter the qualification as MSc Computer Science. Then after, select an image to upload. After that, let's add the experience details.
then add few more experience details notice the total experience in years is calculated properly after that click the create button to save the record let's select and click the details button of the same record to view the record yes all the information are saved correctly so our program is working fine today you have got the best master detail crud of the youtube but i did not show you how to add the other detail grid because in the demo i was showing one master with two detail grid but don't worry it is easy it is already becoming a very lengthy video that's why i did not show in this video so i kept it for part 4 so let's see that in part 4 with this i am completing this video before i sign off i request you to subscribe and share this video i would appreciate if you would like and subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified for all of the new videos that i will be posting thank you and bye for now